Hey, while you in the first five seconds of the video, go ahead, like, and subscribe. One of the other things that he said in that video, he said, believe in yourself and believe that you're somebody. And we all know in the, in a, in a black community, there's a lot of, a lot of us that are that have low self-esteem, we don't believe in ourselves, we don't, we don't think we can do things, we 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 pretty much locked in a box. And it's and it's a, as a result of the harsh living conditions we grew up in, even going back to slavery, all of that. We, we, that causes a, a fact of low self-esteem. So us learning who we are and learning our heritage, learning these things, um, it's, it's an effect that it has on it. It builds up your self-esteem. Read that in John 8 and 32. Uh, this is the book of John, chapter 8, verse 32. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So the truth is, one, the law, statutes, and commandments of the Bible, but also that truth is that the Bible is our historical record. When you look at the Bible, everything that's written about the Bible, we read the Bible, we're reading our history, we're reading about ourselves. So if we read about ourselves in the Bible, we know who we are and where we came from, we can actually be more successful at getting where we need to be. Uh, from that, it says the truth, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Go to Deuteronomy 7 and 6. And these are self esteem boosters for us. And no matter what, what uh, stage of life you in? These are self-esteem use boosters, uh, more boosters for us to be be uh, comfortable with our our dark skin, be comfortable with our, as they say, our nappy hair, because we were given these things. We were made in the image of God. Read that. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter seven and verse six. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. So it says, thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. When you look at Deuteronomy chapter 1 and verse 1, we know that Moses wrote the book of Deuteronomy to the Israelites. So that thou, that's in verse 6, that thou is the Israelites. Read. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. So the Most High God chose the Israelites to be a special people above all other nations on the earth. And we're gonna go through a few more scriptures when we get to the slides, but we're gonna see that we are actually that special people. And that's, that's, actually, that's the exact reason why when you, when you look in, no matter where, where you look at, wherever we are, we are in the harshest conditions. We, we, have, we are the lowest in society, no matter where you go as a nation, as a whole. And that's a direct result of us going away from the, the, the principles, the laws, the statutes of the Bible and going and doing our own thing, doing what we thought was right. But what the scriptures say, thou art in holy people unto the Lord thy God, the Lord thy God chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. So we are this special people. Uh, go to Deuteronomy 28. And I'm gonna pull up the slide so uh, I, can, I can share my screen. Yes, please. You can share. Bear with me one second. I'm opening up the slide. So, okay. go to Deuteronomy 28 and 15. Uh, so, this so, the starting, our history before slavery is really that we are the Israelites. And we're going to show that by going through Deuteronomy 28. Go to read that. Uh, this is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, and verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes with which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So real quick, read Deuteronomy 27 and one, because I don't want y'all to just take my word from it. I want to hear, I want you all to hear from the Bible who this is being written to. Read. 
This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 27 and verse 1. And Moses, with the elders of Israel, commanded the people, saying, Keep all the commandments which I command you this day. So Moses, he, this is directed from Moses to the Israelites. So read Deuteronomy 28, 15 one more time. It's Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. But it shall come to pass if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So we know that Moses wrote this well over 3,000, 2,000, 3,000 years ago. And he's saying it shall come to pass. So he's speaking about something that's going to happen in the future to the Israelites, read. If thou will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So he instructed the Israelites that the commandments that was given to us, and we, we know we, we're familiar with the Ten Commandments, so I'll just cite some of those. Uh, keep the Sabbath day holy, honor your mother, your mother and father, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, you shouldn't co covet your neighbor's, uh, what, anything that's your neighbor's, his wife, his goods, cattle, whatever. Those are the commandments that we were given, and those, that's, that's, that's a small portion of them, but those are the commandments that we were given, and he says, if you break those commandments, these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Go to 16. Verse 16. Curse shalt thou be in the city. So one of those curses is that the Israelites will be cursed in the city. When we look in our, our history, this is one of the things we were sold as cargo, put on uh, slave auction blocks. Just pretty much put up for sale. We were sold into slavery. Read it, read it again. Cursed shalt thou be in this city. And cursed shalt thou be in the city. When you look in, when you look in this, is, this is historical facts. So it shows that, this is showing us that the Bible is our history book because these curses directly pinpoint our history, the things that we've been through as a nation. So it's reading the slide. Thousands of blacks and Latinos and Native Americans were held in bondage and sold in the early colonial, early colonial settlements of New France, New Brunswick, Prince Edward Island, Nova Scotia, and Upper Canada. And then read on, read on, read again. And cursed shalt thou be in the field. Cursed shalt thou be in the field. When you examine history, we were picking, we were on the slave, on the, on the cotton fields, the tobacco fields, uh, t uh, sugar, sugar cane. We was cursed to serve hard bondage. We was cursed in the field. Uh, this is more images of us being cursed in the field. I think these are, that's wheat, or is that, no, that's cane, sugar cane. We was basically working for free, slave labor. We were cursed, that's a curse. Uh, skip up. Read three, verse 19. Verse 19, cursed shall thou be when thou comest in, and cursed shalt thou be when thou goest out. So it says, cursed shalt thou be when thou comest in, and cursed shalt thou be when thou goest out. Basically, we were born into slavery, and we died in slavery. That's how when we look at the history of our forefathers, that's exactly what happened. They, they had children, the children were born into slavery, and sold to this master over there, that master over there. When they died, they still were slaves. Uh, skip a little bit more. I'm skipping through. A lot of it because it's 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 a lot of information I do want to get through. I want to pinpoint specific things that we all can. I'm pretty sure some of us are familiar with some of these things, but I want to hit home with the specific things that that really that most of us are aware aware of and privy to. Um, well, twenty two. Read that. Verse twenty three. And thy heaven that is over thy head shall be brass, and the earth that is underneath thee shall be iron. So the heaven that is over our head, the heaven is rulership. We was, we was being ruled by our slave masters. And those slave masters were, as we all know, the so-called white men. We were sold from, Af from the west coast of Africa to the so-called white men. And it says, thy heaven that is over thy head shall be brass. 
and look at the images and you can see multiple of these images over the internet as you just search. We have brass bells over our head. And on our, the, earth, the earth that is under these shall be iron, iron shackles on our feet. So we couldn't run away. Here we go, read that. Verse 32, thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people and thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. And there shall be no might in thine hand. So when you, when you look at the history of slavery, it says thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. We have many of the slave movies. Uh, uh, what's, what's the roots? We got roots. Uh, what was the, some of the more recent ones? Um, the name slipped 12 years. Harriet, Underground Railroad. Yeah. Yep. yeah, even this series. And it shows our sons and our daughters being sold to the master in Virginia, master in Massachusetts, sold off with what nothing we could do. I think it was 12 years of slave where they had the scene with the young lady, her son, or was it her daughter? It's been a while since it I was both her. son and the daughter. They, they were sold, and all she could do, she was crying for days and days and days. And it was nothing that she could do. Her eyes, all she could do was look, and it says fail with longing for them all the day long. That was her just crying for days in and days out. And it says, and there should be no might in thine hand, meaning we had no military might, we had no economical might, we had no might to get our to fight back and get our children back. There was nothing we can do. Skip up. I'm gonna go to 40, 40, what to read 46. Uh, verse 46, and they shall be upon thee. Wait, no, read that, read that, we're going to go back. Okay. And they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder and upon thy seed forever. So this is just that they is referring right back to what we read in verse 15, the curses. That they is the curses going to be upon the children of Israel for a sign, meaning if you, a sign is an identifying uh, marker. Like if you if you um, if you go to a if you go to a school you go to a block you gotta look at the street sign and know where you're at. So that sign is the curses. That's how we know who the Israelites are today. Because if we in the if the Israelites are in a position of breaking God's commandments, you're gonna be able to identify who they are by the curses that's on them. And those some of those curses are what we just read. So it says, uh, and they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder. And upon thy seed forever. That wonder is a lot of even us, a lot of people, various nations, they look at the things that we go through. Even in, when you look at the murder rate in Chicago, the murder rate in Detroit, the way we treat each other, that's a wonder. It's 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 a it's a it's a wonderful thing to look like. How can you kill the brother that looks just like you? How can you fight the sister that looks just like you? We the same people, but that's a that's a wonder. And that's, it says, these things will be upon thy seed forever. As long as we break, we're not keeping the commandments, those are the things that you're going to see within the nation of Israel. Now go back to 37. Verse 37. And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb and a byword among all the nations, whether the Lord shall lead thee. So it says thou shalt become an astonishment. That's going back to that wonder. A proverb. You got many proverbs that's... Uh, Black if you want to, yeah, black people are always late. If you want to have from something from a Negro, put it in the book. Uh, black men are lazy. When a lot, some of them are true to some respects, but some of them are not false. Are not are not are not accurate. I should say, because but that's a this proverb. Black men are lazy. Uh, if you want to have some, a lot of our a lot of our young men don't like to read. It's a proverb. It's a wise saying about us. And then it says a byword. I think the next slide got some of those bywords. So these are things that's an astonishment amongst our, uh, amongst these are images of what an astonishment is amongst our people. Our young men walking the streets, sagging their pants, um, and then a pro the byword. So these are all bywords because the, when you look in the Bible, you can see none of the, you, you'll see none of these nationalities, but these are the bywords that's upon us. As blacks, we call ourselves African American, black, uh, colored. Over the years, it's changed so many times. Afro American, those are all bright words for for the um, so what we call the Northern Kingdom: Puerto Rican, Cuban, Mexican, Dominican, 
those are basically being a, a byword is being called anything outside of your God given name. That's a curse. And we are the only we are the only people that fits that because most of us, most of us as blacks, we don't know our history beyond slavery. We don't know the things that happened to us before slavery. We just know as far back as we can think is slavery. And that's as a result of the curses. Uh, Go to verse 48. I'll start at 47 or read 47. Uh, yeah, you can start, start at 47. Verse 47, because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee. So verse 47 is going back to the same thing, saying, because you didn't serve the Lord the God, the Lord thy God with joyfulness, you didn't obey his commandments with joyfulness, understanding that he chose you and gave you his commandments, gave you his laws. Uh, read verse 48. Verse 48. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies which the Lord shall send against thee. So it says that one of these curses is that we are served by enemies that the Lord sent against us. And it says in hunger, in hunger, that's snap. We get pretty much, we have to, everything that whenever we get hungry, we got to go to our enemy. Excuse me. We got to go to McDonald's. We got to go to Jules. We got to go to Walmart. Because when you look higher up in the, the owners of the, those companies, we don't own those things. We got to go to our enemies to get it. So read on. And in thirst. And in thirst. If you got if you want to go get something to drink to quench your thirst, you got to go get your Evian. Uh, can't see what that arrowhead, I think they say. Aquafini, Dasani, Fiji, Ice Mountain, Smart Water. We got to go to our enemies. And if you have a house or if you live in an apartment where you got to pay the water bill, you got to pay, you got to pay for the water. And you have to pay your village hall, your government hall, however you, however you want to say it. You're going to your enemy for thirst. Read. And in nakedness. And in nakedness. That's going into the clothes that's on our back. When you look back, look at the tags. Made in Bangladesh. Made in China. Made in Taiwan. France. Italy. We don't, we don't own the manufacturing companies that make the fabric and put it together where we, we had a shirt. You may have your certain, certain, uh, Design of labels that have a logo on them, but you still got to go to your to your enemies to get these things. Read. And then what of all things? And one of all things for our medication, medical, medical treatment. We got to go to our enemies. Social security card when you, when you give birth to children to get your um, your birth certificate. You got to go to your enemies for your education. For to get a house, you got to go to the banks. We don't own the banks. We have to go. So our enemies for all things. When you want to get married, you got to go to the courthouse. Read. And he. So now it says, and he. So it's being very specific as to who that enemy is. Read. Shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. It says he. So that enemy that the Most High God sent against the nation of Israel says he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. Read. Until he have destroyed thee. So this yoke of iron was on our neck up until a certain dispensation of time. Then it was the yoke, of irons, the yoke of irons was on our neck so that we wouldn't escape, we wouldn't run. That's how they kept us under bondage. But after so long a time, just as if you have a dog that had that invisible leash around their neck, so if they go, if they go a certain distance, it shocks their neck where they don't go. So after a while that dog gets shocked, that dog is not gonna go beyond that, that, uh, that, uh, that perimeter that's set. And that's the same thing with us. Read that last part again. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. It says until he have destroyed thee. So the reason today that we're walking around and we don't have those yokes of iron on our neck because we've been destroyed. We, we lost it. We've been destroyed. We've been stripped of our nationality. We've been stripped of our heritage. We've been stripped of our culture, our way of living, everything. We were stripped of it. So once, once, that, once all that was destroyed and taken from us, they said, oh, you can let them, you can let them free because they're not going nowhere. Okay. 
Yeah, read that. Uh, this is the book of Hosea, chapter four and verse six. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee. So that's a, the result of the curses. We reject the knowledge that knowledge is the commandments. The knowledge is God's laws. We rejected the commandments. We didn't follow after and, and apply God's commandments. So the Most High God rejected us. He turned this back on us because we turned our back on him. And then I'm going to go to the left of 68. Yes, sir. Uh, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. So now it says, so this is Deuteronomy 28 and 68. It says, read it again from the top. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. So it says, the Lord shall bring you into Egypt again. If you if, if you know anything about the Bible or if you don't know, when, when the Israelites were in Egypt, they were in bondage. Read that in Exodus 20 and 2. Because Egypt is not, we said, just, and the Lord shall bring you into Egypt again. When you examine the history, the, the Israelites never physically went back into the land of Egypt after they were delivered when Moses took them out of the land of Egypt. Read. This is the book of Exodus chapter 20 and 2. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. So Egypt is another word for bondage. So in Deuteronomy 28 68, where it says, and the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. He's saying the Lord shall bring you into bondage again. How? With ships. With ships. When you examine our history, we came over here from the west coast of Africa on transatlantic cargo slave ships. When you examine uh, the, the, the native Indians and the, the Mexicans, so to say, they were, living, they were already over here. They were also sent over to Europe and Spain on slave ships. Uh, and this is this is an image of the native the natives being taken over to Europe and England and Spain. Uh, read on. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again, and there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men and bond women, and no man shall buy you. So now it says, Thou shalt see it no, no thou shalt see it no more again. That it that this is talking about is our homeland. Uh, let's get that in Galatians. So that it is talking about we will not see our homeland again. And many of us, we don't know that Israel, Jerusalem, is our homeland. That's where we are from. This is the book of Galatians, chapter 4 and verse 26. But Jerusalem, which is above, is free. So Jerusalem, is uh, which is above, is above all nations. Is free, read. Which is the mother of us all. Which is the mother of us all. So Jerusalem, which is in Africa, is the motherland. Jerusalem, which is the homeland of Israel. Now read the last part again. Uh, there you shall be sold. Okay. And there, this is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord thy God shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again, mm -hmm. and there ye shall be sold unto your enemies. So when we get when we got off those slave ships, we have seen the image, we were familiar with the image, we were sold. We were sold to Master Charles and James Virginia. We were sold when, once we got off those slave ships. Families broken up, families split up, children taken from their uh, parents and sold into slavery. That bond men and bond women and slave women and slave slave men and slave women. Read the last part. And no man shall buy you. And no man shall buy you. That no man shall buy you. Buy is an old Quaker word for redeem, meaning no man is going to be able to save you out of the condition. Because when you look at when you look at history, I think a, a, a lady Matt mentioned it earlier. You had Nat Turner. He he led, he led a slave revolt, but he wasn't able to take us out of our condition. Uh, you had uh, Marcus Garvey, uh, Malcolm X, even Mount Martin Luther King. They they rose up to try to take us to a better place, but it all it all didn't work. And the reason it didn't work is because we had, for us to for us to get out of the conditions that we in, we got to go back and do 
we got to go back and do what caused us to be in this situation. And let's get Deuteronomy 28 and 1. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, and verse 1. And it shall come to pass if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So now this is the flip side of if thou shalt not keep the commandments. Let's read it again. And it shall come to pass if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So now Moses is saying if, you, if, if, the, Israel, if the Israelites would listen and keep the commandments, read. To observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, mm -hmm. that the Lord thy God will set thee high above all nations of the earth. So when the Israelites, which, we, which as we just seen through the curses, which is us, if we keep God's commandments, then he gonna set, the most high God gonna set us on high above all the nations. And that's where we gonna be in a proper position where Deuteronomy seven and six said, the Lord chose us to be above all nations. Read. Verse two. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So when we keep the commandments, we do what, what God tells us to do. Then he said blessings gonna come on us. He's gonna bless us. Let's see what a few of those blessings. Are. Blessed shall thou be in the city. We are blessed in the city. We will be the one, we wouldn't be in the uh, slums and the ghettos. We'd actually be running the city. We'd be uh, running the, the governmental system and all of that. We would be blessed in the city, read. And blessed shall thou be in the field. And blessed shall we be in the field, meaning we we plant, we have, we have uh, livestock and, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, crops and old farmlands. And, this, and when I say this, I know some of us have these things but we're talking about as a nation, as a whole, read. Verse four, blessed shall be the fruit of thy body. I mean, our children will be blessed. They won't be blessed and they won't, they won't be born into a curse. They'll actually be born and they'll have an inheritance. We'll have an inheritance to leave our children, read. And the fruit of thy ground. And the fruit of thy ground, the crops will yield. When we plant seeds, we'll, get, we'll be able to benefit from the fruit that it yield. Read. And the fruit of thy cattle. Uh -huh. The increase of thine kind and the flocks of thy sheep. So if we were keeping the commandments, we wouldn't worry about, we wouldn't have to worry about GMO foods and, and food created in the lab. We wouldn't have to worry about all that because our ground would be fruitful. We can, we can plant and grow our own food as a nation, as a whole. So uh, and I know I skipped through a lot, but it, as, as you all probably seen, it, it was a lot to go to. We only have a certain amount of time. But So this is the first this is one of the first, the first aspect of our history before slavery is according to the Bible, we are the Israelites. That's our, that's our history and that's our heritage. That's what we actually connect to. That's why majority of us, we're actually drawn, we're drawn to the Bible, but in, in, in the mainstream, we're not taught the correct understanding of the Bible. Um, so the next, is, I have one more slide. So this right here is uh, it's called the Veronet. It's a church in Romania, and as you can see, if you can see, you can see from here, you can't see specifically the images, but you see it got images all over the sides of it. So this this is a church from the from the Veronet that was made that was built in 1488 in Romania. So when you look at up close at some of these images, you see. You see here where it's showing an a angel and look at the complexion. This is a, a black angel and he's blowing the trumpet. If you're familiar with the uh, revelation where, you, where it talks about the, the trumpets and even in First Thessalonians where it's, the trumpet's blown and the, uh, the angels come to get the, Israel, the, the people of God, which are the Israelites. You can see these images. These are dark skinned people. The next one, this is an image of the prophets. On the, le on the left, you got the, you got the disciples, and then you got the prophets. When you look up close, they're all dark. And these are, this is during the Dark Ages. The Dark Ages was from, what, the nine, what, uh, 132 AD, or something like that? 193 AD. 193 AD to 14, 
1491. 1491. So during the Dark Ages, we actually were ruling in Europe. And that's where these images are from. And this here, we have an image of, on, on the left, you have King David. And on the right, you got more prophets. This is another image that's on the Veronae, the church that we looked at. You see, uh, if you look in the middle, you see the hand with the key. That hand is, that hand is the hand of God. And you, as you notice, it's a black hand. And then at the bottom, you have a white image. On the right, we see more where you see the angels, the angels are dark, and then you see the lighter, the lighter complected or white. Those are the ones that's in chain. Get that scripture in Revelation. Revelation 13. Or are you talking about that? I want to catch you. Yeah, that leads them to catch you. So this, these are the images that's on yeah, 13 and 10. Yeah. Uh, this is the book of Revelation, chapter 13 and verse 10. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. So this is, read it, read. And he that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Uh -huh. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. So it says, he that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. We were led into captivity. So we, we're not the ones that's going to be in captivity that's going to be going into captivity on Judgment Day. It's going to be our captors, the ones that captured us and put us in slavery. This is a close-up of that image. We see the, the black angel, and he's going against, and they're putting him in chains, though, as you can see from the images, the so-called white man keep going and then here you have Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, John the Baptist and Mary and as you can see they're all dark images. Right here you have Adam and Eve, the story of Adam and Eve. Do we, do we read Genesis 2 and 7? No sir. Read Genesis chapter 2 and verse 7. So when you read Adam and Eve when you look at on the mainstream if you Google, if you even go on the Google search and Google Adam and Eve you'll get, you'll always get predominantly white images where the Bible speaks contrary. And these images from the dark ages show us that, read that. This is the book of Genesis chapter two and verse seven. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. So it says the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, read. And breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. So anywhere you go, you look at the dust of the ground, the dirt of the ground, it's even even the sand is from a very the darker the deeper you go the darker the darker it gets but all of the sand the dirt however you want to say it it's all uh brown it goes from light a light brown to a dark brown and we see adam and eve in these images they painted they they are dark here's another image of king david holding the bible um, then the one on the right is Moses with the burning bush and the commandments. And the books that they came, the book that these images come from is the icon. Here you have two archangels. You notice that they're both dark skinned. Another one, Christ and his disciples. You see them all, you see Christ dark skinned and all of the disciples are dark skinned. Black man, Archangel Michael, black. And then here you have a, a painting of Samson from the uh, Bible in the catacombs. This is from the book, The Catacombs by James Stevenson. You see Samson, when he was fighting a the lion, they have him drawn as a so-called black. Here is uh, Abraham, when Abraham was told to slay Isaac as a test of his faith. You see, he, the images are dark. Uh, here, this is, I believe this is Paul. Paul on the upper left. I want to say the bottom is Christ. Uh, I can't remember exactly who the one on the right is. But as you see, the angels here, they're all dark. 
then here, this is a, this is during the Dark Ages. You have us dressed in royal clothing. This is showing that we were actually. This is the we look at the the the, um, the uh, bottom the bottom part. The adoration of the kings by Vince, Vincenzo Foppa, fifteen hundred A.D. Here you see the meeting. This is when uh, Joseph and Mary took Christ into the temple when he was a baby. Here you have the Apostle Nicanor, he can save 70, Onesimus, and the prophet Nahum. On the right, on the left here, you have the Apostles Peter and Paul. And read with that for what the rest of us say. But this is Peter and Paul. And here, this is another image on the left. This is another image of the destruction or judgment day. And as you see, the angels are dark. And here you have the death of Mary. You see all of the images. These are dark skinned people or black people. Here, this is in the Catalan Atlas. See a, a dark king. And then here you have a black Saint Maurice, Knight of the Holy Lance. And then what you see on the image, you see him on the one on the left, you see he has the, the little eagle at the top of his head. That's what you would call a coat, a coat of arms. Um, and then I have another book. I'm gonna put the image on the screen that it shows this this one. I'm actually reading because it's the same image. This is, I'm gonna read real quick. It says the 100 amazing facts about the Negro with complete proof by J.A. Rogers. You, you say you was putting it up on the screen. So uh, yeah, I could, put it, I could put it on the screen. So I'm gonna stop sharing this for a second. Just to, and then I don't know if it's gonna come up clear, but this is the book. And then on the first, very first page. Did I take a picture of this? Uh, not the first page. So here you see, right here on the, on the, I guess the, I think it's on the, the right of your screen. Where I'm pointing at. This is the same image we just looked at on the on the slide. And then this is image of Hitler. So I'm gonna read the uh, commentary that's at the bottom. It says a black champion. Of Germany and a white one. It says Saint Maurice, celestial saint of Germany, wearing the German eagle on his head. Hitler, centuries later, also with the German eagle. So that, that's more proof that we actually ruled during during the Dark Ages, whereas was taught and we I don't know what they teach them in the schools now, but I know when I was in high school. I remember them saying that the Dark Ages were called the Dark Ages because it was very uh, dark and evil and all type of stuff. Just like Martin Luther King said in that in that uh, video. in that video. Every time you look at the image, everything they the word black or black people are always painted in a bad light, and that's what was taught. And like I said, when I was in high school, that's what was taught that the Dark Ages was dark and evil, gloomy, and all of that stuff. So. Go back to the slide. Um, to be on mine, uh, Saint Maurice was from Spain. So Saint Maurice was from Spain. I know a lot of us have heard of the Moors before, um, you know, and don't don't really know the details about the Moors. But Saint Maurice was a Moor. Next slide. It's more more black in images. Uh, these these the, the men paint uh, depicted in these images says unknown, but it's a portrait of unknown meaning or context said to be the, in the National Gallery, Stenberg Palace in Prague, Czech Republic said to be Bus von Clay uh, from this is fifteen twenty. And a lot of these images that we're seeing, we don't see a lot of these images over here and on the west in the west in America. A lot of these images, when you go to the, uh, Europe and things like that, a lot of these images are actually there. 
but here we in a it's like we in a bubble, so to say. And then all of these all of these images that's in this slide shall come out of books, and that's where one of those probably like we mentioned the proverb. These things been put in books for years upon years upon years, but because majority, the vast majority of us don't read or don't like to pick up a book, these things were hidden right in our face. Here you have two more images. Unknown, one is unknown, says uh, called Portrait of Moorish Woman by Pablo, Pablo Veronese, AKA Paul. Can't really see, but it says Italian 1528 to 1588. And it says her style of dress and appearance indicates that she is probably a European woman. Another image, so-called black man. Jam, most most of the arts, portrait of a nobleman, guest of, guest of the Queen of Austria. The painting dates back to the early 1500s and what we now call Belgium, then part of the Duchy of Brabant. I was about yeah. to say that photo is more uh, proof that it states that it was a nobleman. A nobleman, uh, status-wise, social status-wise, it's like the complete opposite of a slave or what they call in that area in Europe peasants. So that, that goes to show you that, you know, we had very important people uh, over in Austria. That's the next slide. And left to right, you have portrait of the servant of Princess of Zanzibar, noble woman, Italy, seen from Terrence, France. These are all black images from the, uh, like the, the Europe and in the, in the, in the, in the area, UK, more dark, more black images. Yeah, and there's the Peruvian noble woman, Italy, and a Brazilian woman, Netherlands. These are more, you see the man on the left, dark skin the, with the coat with the flag, coat of arms, showing that we were ruling. We were actually ruling it during that period of time, even as you see on the right. More, more black images. There were more. Then this one, this is from the book, uh, The Russian Icons. You see, uh, I think this is Christ in the middle, and then you have the disciples and the apostles. This is Moses. Moses, you see Moses when he was crossing the Red Sea. And you see these are dark images. And then now we will say what happened. What happened with these images? Because you see here on this image right here, you get that Maccabee. So you see here, you see in the background, you see an image of the dark Christ. And then also you see kind of off to the left, I think that was one of the images of Paul. And then this is Leonardo da Vinci repainting these images. And as you can see on the, the right, you can see that this image that he's painting is white. Read that. Uh, this is the book of 1 Maccabees chapter three and verse 48. And laid open the book of the law. And then this Maccabees, just the Maccabees is doing the Greek captivity, because this is another book that's a part of the Apocrypha that was taken out of the Bible in the late 1700s. This it contains the Greek captivity. Excuse me, because when you when you have a, when you have a regular Bible, of when you have one of the regular Bibles, you got the Old Testament and then you got the New Testament, and the, the Apocrypha is not in there. Whereas from 1611 up until the 1700s, the, whole, the Apocrypha was within the Bible. Even if you go, if you have a Catholic Bible, the Apocrypha is in there, except book of Ezra, but it was taken out. And this is one of the things in the Greek captivity, without the Apocrypha, you're missing the history of the Greek captivity. But read that. Uh, this is the book of the first Maccabees chapter three and verse 48. And lay open the book of the law, wherein the heathen has sought to paint the likeness of their images. So it's just as you see in this image, that's what happened. It's, 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 it's like history, history repeats itself. They, they know our enemies. Everybody knows that this Bible is a black man's book. When you read it and you read it with the correct eyes and the correct understanding, the Bible is a black man's book. 
and we had images. We had images with, that was within our Bible, but as you see here, all of those image, images were changed. So now when we see the, a lot of us see the Bible, we look at it all, that's a white man's book, things of that nature, but everything in the Bible points to, actually points to us. It describes us to a T, it describes our condition, our current condition, the, the curses, it, it describes everything that we've been through, everything that we go through to a T. Um, this is what we just read. We read Job, and, Job 9 and 24. So oh. then after the, after the dark ages, you had the Renaissance. Renaissance is a, is a word for rebirth. And this, what, what, is, what is that going into? Because the dark ages started from 193 AD to around four, late 1400s. And then you have the Renaissance that came in after the rebirth, rebirth of who? The rebirth of what nation? Read that. Uh, this is the book of Job, chapter 9, verse 24. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. He covereth the faces of the judges thereof. If not, where? And who is he? So it says the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. So right now, today, we see, we, we, we all know who's ruling the earth, who's running things. There's, there's no secret. It says he covereth the faces of the judges thereof. The judges are the prophets of the Bible. The judges are the prophets, Moses, uh, Aaron, that we read about in the Bible. And they said they cover the faces of the judges. That's what we just seen in that image. And it says, if not, where and who is he? Who's doing that? Who's, who's painting the faces of the judges? Who's changing our images? Who's painting us in a bad light everywhere we are? That is on this. So that's it. So I want to go to... Uh, Brother from yeah. Kaya, can we we stop at 5 30? Can we save some uh time for like uh question yeah. comments? And I I have one more little activity for uh folks to do. For for after 5 30 or before? Um before 5 30. That's what time we, we usually end at 5 30. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought it was I thought it was going to 5 30 and then okay. So I'm just gonna read like two more scriptures and then I'll open it up. Okay. So, or the Song of Solomon 1 and 1 and 1. And I want to show one, one more quick image because kings is like, the, we, know the, we know of the Bible, we know the King James version of the Bible. When you do a, if you do an internet search, King James is depicted as a so-called white man. So this is a book, it's called The Negro Question, part four, The Missing Link. And then this is an image of King James. I hope y'all can see that. But King James was a so-called black man. And he just authorized the translation of the Bible. I'll read that real quick. Uh, this is the Song of Solomon. I'm sorry. Uh, you said Song, Song of Solomon. Solomon. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, this is Song of Solomon, chapter one and verse one. The Song of Songs, which is Solomon's. Uh -huh. So the Song of Songs, which is Solomon's. So, so Song of Solomon was written by King Solomon. Read verse five. Verse five. I am black, but comely. So he says, I am black, but comely. I am black, but handsome. I am black, but beautiful. Read. Oh, ye daughters of Jerusalem, uh -huh. as the tents of Kedar. As the tents of Kedar. Kedar is a, a, a Arabic nation. So he says, the tent, and they had the tents of Kedar. They were very dark. Read. As the curtains of Solomon. As the curtains of Solomon. So we read here, and we can go on and on and on. But for time's sake, the, our history before slavery, first and foremost, that we are the Israelites. And we, have to, we have to keep the commandments. So I'll, I'll close it out there. And let me just mix it out of that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Wow. I actually, I learned, I learned quite a bit. <laughs> um, any questions, any comments? I think that's something to be said, even, you know, back then about like, who's painting, painting a picture, who's changing the story. I recently um, saw a TikTok about how um, the image of Christ got changed. Um, Leonardo DiCaprio, I mean, not Leonardo DiCaprio, Leonardo da Vinci, actually. <laughs> I, know, <laughs> I know, right? Um, 
change the image to to be like that of his his lover and um that image just kind of rolled with the media back then and that was the image that was kind of shared widely of what Christ actually looked like but the picture that we see of what we what we call like the white Jesus that yeah that was like some some other person so yeah this is really enlightening for me for sure so last thing before we go, I well, first thing I want to say is um, thank you to Brother Semakaya and Brother Obadiah Israel. Thank you for um, the talk. Thank you for kind of solidifying that that Black is beautiful from a historical view. Uh, I I appreciate it. Learned a lot today. Um, yeah, uh, I thank you guys. For